I don't think I've played a game quite like Severed Steel. It's a unique combo of movement and combat that I haven't seen in any game prior. It's the epitome of you can't experience this game by watching some gameplay or listening to some YouTuber describe it. Oh fuck. This game was my personal game of the year in 2021. It's a shame it's not getting as much love as it is. The devs didn't pay me by the way. I just really like this game. However, if you do want to throw a few bucks my way, uh, I have a cat to feed. This critique will spoil all the gameplay and story for Severed Steel, but you definitely still play it. Let's get to the reason why you clicked this. What's this game about? It's about two things, moving and shooting. That might seem too generic, but to make it stand out, I made a few Venn diagrams. Call of Duty keeps them relatively separate. There's a... Uh, Nice area in the middle for jump shots and crouch shots, and Titanfall 2 has a lot of crossover, and Severed Steel is a... Uh... Oh. Huh? Let me explain. Severed Steel released in September 2021, developed by Greylock Studio, published by Digerati, to players loving it, but mixed critic reception. To when it fell to obscurity, and some YouTuber with an underscore made a frickin' video essay talking about it. Your character wakes up in a dump, no fancy cutscene, only these comic-like pans. Her name is Steel, well, uh, she's technically like a cyborg or something, so should I use it? You know what? Enemies refer to them as her, so that's what I'm going with. Steel is as broken as a AAA game on launch, missing her left hand, but has a determined look in her eyes. She's about to fuck people up. You get put into a small few tutorial levels that teach you the basic mechanics, moving, sliding, jumping, and the main mechanic of the game. You don't take damage while doing a stunt. Most games like to keep accuracy the same, or lowering it based on your movement, but reducing it to zero? That's unheard of. So, you learn all the stunts. Slide, dive, jump, double jump, wall run, air scrape, kick the wall to refresh your jump, each with their own different uses and levels and situations. I'll get into how I love the diversity of options later, but then you're given a gun. It's empty, but you can throw it and use it as a weapon. And at this point, I made a realization. Steel only has one hand. Fuck, that means this gun, yeah, um. So yeah, use your ammo wisely. Oh, you're also given a slow down time mechanic. That's arguably integral to the experience since it's literally your right mouse button by default. And at this point, you're thrown into a bunch of levels with a variety of objectives as you make your way to, um, somewhere? I don't know, the game story's not clear. Each level consists of, you know, destroy these pistons, get to the end, kill all the enemies, destroy some generators, you know, the typical stuff. And that's where the fun of the game really begins. take down enemies and not die, you have to be moving. Like I said earlier, you're literally not taking damage when doing movement tech. This leads you to hug walls, dive around every corner, and slide to keep your invincibility up. Due to the fast pace of this game, the time slow mechanic comes in really nice and helps you line up shots mid stunts. Oh, by the way, kill an enemy, the time slowometer recharges a little bit. This also applies to you when you're in time slow meaning that if you dive into a room full of enemies, 
You can shoot them all down if you're quick enough at aiming, have enough ammo, and are good enough. Did you take a bit of damage? Oh, guess what? In order to heal, you just have to kill a couple enemies. This is where I started to realize how deep this game is. Most mechanics are intertwined. Out of ammo and don't see a gun? Getting close to an enemy with a wall run? Dive over their head, grab their sidearm, and shoot them in the head with their own gun. Then take their main weapon for use later. Moments like these happen all the time. Sometimes you can be in groups of three, four, 20 enemies and find yourself having to steal one of their guns and repeat the process. Well, hold on. Stunts are so powerful in this game. How do they keep it balanced? Each movement tech has its downsides to it. Did you just dive? Well, you can't wall run or slide, giving you a small window to be shot after performing it. Slide? You can extend stunt windows. Has the same issue though where you can't wall run. Wall running lets you have free shots on those beneath you, but that means you're most likely further away from enemies, and now you have to aim. This game facilitates the basic stunts in all the level design as well, giving you several window panels to dive through, desks to vault over, small crevices to slide through, and panels with wall run sections for quick movement. This interplay between combat, movement, level design tech, you adopt a dab on your foes play style, which is honestly the best way to play this game. And just when you think they couldn't balance another gimmick, you find out what Steel has been searching for. Steel just found her missing limb. And it just so happens this limb is not a hand, but it's an arm cannon that fires plasma balls. Then, immediately after, it introduces you to a level with nowhere to go. But there's a wall in front of you. This is when you realize that the cannon can actually shape your environment. Have a wall to go through? Now you have a window to dive through. This room look hard? Let me just blast a hole into the ceiling and get out of here. Shield soldiers are a pain to deal with. Well, guess what? One shot goes through their shield and kills them instantly. I thought we had a solid basis of mechanics to make a whole 10 hour campaign out of. Suddenly, you're given this new tool that changes everything. This gives you more freedom to approach the levels any way you want. You can go the normal way, traversing like a typical enemy would, or you can make your own path. Done effectively, you could definitely speed run through levels just breaking through walls. This cannon is balanced by the fact that it has three charges, and to get back these charges, you have to kill one of these tougher enemies that have gear on their back and extra armor. Oh, and this isn't related at all, but on another note, I love how the game just starts you off in complete silence and gives you a door, and as soon as you kick it in. It helps that the soundtrack is one of the best goddamn game OSTs I've heard. Floating Door killed it with these EDM style bassy beats and it really elevates the game. All of which have been playing in this video. Check out the OST, it's really good. The thing is, is that this game never stops the onslaught of mechanics. They have fans, teleporters, rooms where the floor is actually the ceiling, enemies that are heavily armor equipped with flamethrowers that destroy the environment, enemies that are invisible, enemies that can fly, enemies with shields, enemies that are bosses, and uh, yeah, a lot of enemies. So many things can be thrown at you right into the very end. It's almost like your brain cannot chemically produce boredom. Speaking of which, wait, what? Steel fights her way to a teleporter, of which you have to clear an astounding 40 enemy wave in one try. This wonky room with a teleporter on the ground floor that teleports you to the ceiling, this is amazing. It's a great arena with staggered spawns, then you naturally move to find the next platoon of enemies. After which, you teleport to the final area of the game, right into the barracks of the enemy camp, where you fight your way up several more levels to get to an actual boss fight. Well, apparently this whole time you are fighting a corporation? I have no idea, but hashtag eat the rich, I guess. The whole gimmick of this fight is that you waste ammo by shooting at the boss, 
sometimes aiming for the weak point, then have to retreat and grab guns from the grunts that show up. Underwhelming, honestly, but the shock value of experiencing a full health boss the first time was amazing. After which you go through the rest of the company, corporate buildings? I honestly don't know. Where a lot of your objectives become more combat oriented. Kill them all. Burn the house. Destroy the heart. Out of which you get upgrades to your arm cannon, making it be able to charge for more damage and hold five charges instead of three. And nearly three levels later, you are at the end of the game. You're greeted by a great wall of which you need to use your arm cannon to drill through it. Each section of the wall you get past, it's another wave of enemies. 25, 30, then you're through. The heart of the company. This is a boss fight to where you have to shoot at the heart and occasionally destroy shields. The real challenge is just the amount of enemies they spawn to protect these things. Afterwards, you arrive at the final gate. After deactivating the energy shields, you unlock the final key to your arm cannon and can fire arm cannon shots infinitely. But you can't abuse that for long, because guess what? The credits are rolling. Severed Steel is a really short game. I didn't say that was a bad thing, that's just a fact. First playthrough took me around three hours on the second highest difficulty. My second took me two, my third took me under 1.5. Why not the highest difficulty, you YouTube commenter asked? Well, highest difficulty is one hit kill. And after playing a few levels on it, this game can definitely be completed on that, but it's hard. And I'm only masochistic enough to speedrun Doom Eternal. If you're done, there's a new Game Plus option, where there are more enemies in the campaign playthrough. A horde mode. Yo, wait, what the fuck? There's this... You can do literally every level? <laughs> uh, I did not expect that. And a level editor. To be honest, I'm just a sucker for playing through the campaign again and again and again. So, with that in mind, I spent about 12 minutes sucking this game's dick. Let me get into the section where I can explain where the game can improve. The time slow mechanic is amazing, but it really is a crutch in this game. This game moves at such fast pace that you really can't keep up with aiming. However, I think the game's actually more fun, with this power being more restricted. I personally adapted a strategy in my third playthrough where I would barely use time slow, and found out I was having way more fun hitting these fast paced shots, acting like I did this rather than I have forever to line up. And to be honest, I think it just looks way much cooler. But luckily, this game has a modifier which you can do to enable something very similar, where your amount of slow time is twice the max value, but it never recharges. Which is great. That's exactly how I want to play this game. Thank you devs for making that an option. Also, the story wasn't good. It was literally just panels for cutscenes and very vague up to interpretation with a total of like three and a half characters. All of which had like nothing. I can forgive it for this just because it's clear it wasn't the focus. Game's definitely gameplay oriented and they knew how to manage their time. In conclusion, Severed Steel, masterclass of a game. Honestly, I'll treasure this for a while. Movement shooters are making a bit of a comeback with games like Titanfall 2, Doom Eternal, Shadow Warrior 3, all making such a big impact on the market, showing that there's an audience for this, and I hope to see more like it. The state of flow you get into when you are zoned into the game is unique. In Doom Eternal, I feel the stress because I'm scared I'll die and I'll have to restart. And the end of an encounter gives me such a sigh of relief. Meanwhile, in Severed Steel, it's like chasing a high. Feel more like Doom Guy than an Eternal because you can charge in head first without repercussion if you're good enough and can land your shots. I don't exclaim a sigh of relief when I'm in a hard section. I'm speed running to the next enemy placement looking for another kill. So, um, this is the end of the critique where I give a score? 
Honestly, 9 out of 10. Very little wrong with this game, in my opinion. Upon looking for the reviews to see what they thought, the main complaint was difficult levels and... Short? I hate this criticism. We should not be judging a game based on how short it is. Take a theoretical example. Game A is good and takes 5 hours to complete. Game B is bad and takes 40 hours to complete. Obviously, you'd rather play game A rather than game B because you enjoy it, despite game B being longer. This shows that time played isn't everything. The metric we should be using is the net enjoyment we experienced, not how long it kept us entertained. I have about 20 hours in this game, and I would definitely say I got more enjoyment out of this than the 50 hours I have in Elden Ring. In conclusion, stop doing this. <laughs> this game is 25 bucks at full price, and I'm not joking saying that I would have gladly paid 60 for this. You see it at full price, it's worth it. You see this on sale, no excuse. You are at all interested in movement or FPS games, this game would be fantastic. Well, thanks for watching. This is my first attempt of doing like a video critique or analysis of some kind. I definitely don't feel like I did it justice, but to be honest, this game is just mechanics and it's not much else, and it's one of the reasons I love it. So, if you'd like to see more like this, let me know. Uh, do I, do I tell people to smash the subscribe? What do I do? Oh yeah, that's right. I, I gotta go back to playing Doom Eternal because I'm addicted.